Good afternoon or good morning, everybody, depending on where you are. And thank you very much for joining us uh, today for today's webinar. Welcome. My name is Elena and I'm project leader at uh, EPIC, uh, which is European Photonics Industry Consortium. And I will be moderating today's uh, webinar. Uh, today we will be talking about MedFab and uh, with our five speakers, we will discuss uh, what is uh, MedFab and different aspects of this pilot line. Through the webinar, uh, you will learn uh, what is MedFab mission and what is the added value of MedFab to the customers. Also, how to reach MedFab's uh, open access uh, services through the single entry point, uh, which is a front office. Also, we will discuss the technologies that are available um, within MedFab and the online catalog, uh, which you can use to further uh, learn uh, the information about all the technologies inside of MedFab. And finally, we will also talk about uh, MedFab Open Call. Uh, we will discuss uh, how customers could obtain financial support to execute their projects. Um, but uh, before jumping to the presentations, I would like to remind you that this webinar is browser-based. So in case if you disconnect for any reason, you can just click on the link that you received uh, in uh, your emails uh, to rejoin the session. Also, uh, please uh, use the question widget to ask your questions. So you can just type them in there and uh, submit. Uh, you can find the widget on the top left corner of uh, your screen, and we will allocate the time at the end of the webinar to address uh, as many questions as possible uh, or the comments that you might have. And uh, now, without further ado, I would like to welcome our first speaker, Yusu Hiltonen, um, and uh, he will introduce you to Metfab. Yusu? Uh, thank you, uh, Elena, for the introduction. So I'm uh, Jussi Hiltonen, uh, working as a research professor at VTT Technical Research Center of Finland and uh, coordinating uh, MedFab. So MedFab is a um, European Union uh, funded initiative to establish photonics pilot line uh, focusing on medical devices. Our activities started in January 2020 and uh, earlier this year uh, we opened the services for the customers. And the purpose of this webinar is to explain what MedPub is and then how to uh, work with us. So MedPub uh, operations uh, rely on low barrier open access model. The purpose of MedPub pilot production line is to accelerate the commercialization of medical devices and to as well reduce the R&D costs. It has been identified that uh, delays in product development are typically uh, caused by uh, the heterogeneous nature of photonics and uh, fragmented offering of the companies. It is also uh, rather complicated to get knowledge and access to the latest photonics technologies that can be applied to improve the performance of the devices. Also, um, regulatory compliance is highly demanding, uh, especially uh, for SMEs launching the first product to market. And uh, within MedFab, it's possible to cover full R&D chain from uh, proof of concept phase up to certified pilot production with um, the required industrial control. Here you can see uh, how our photonics technologies can be used in uh, different medical applications. Uh, for example, in a hospital environment, the solutions can assist doctors by giving them uh, real-time information of how the uh, treatment or therapy is progressing without the need to send patient samples to a laboratory. The equipment for home diagnostics on the other hand, can be used for monitoring how a patient is recovering from an operation or for getting a wider picture of the situation that is currently possible with other technologies. Uh, molecular diagnostics is about establishing a clinical picture based on a human body fluid, such as serum, saliva, urine, 
and photonics technologies can be applied, for example, in readout units or disposable cartridges in immunoassays or uh, nucleic acid detection. Medfab uh, consortium comprises 18 parties with different roles to cover all the needed activities. We have uh, first five research and technology organizations. Their role is to develop new fabrication techniques and support companies, especially in research and development phases. The other group is formed by the companies uh, with uh, medical certificates, ISO 134. 85 mostly, that enables industrial level control for the fabrication that is uh, very relevant in our domain. Five companies evaluate the quality of our technologies in their application domain, and uh, this mechanism is included to allow inbuilt in feedback during the pipeline establishment phase. And finally, to support the technology development activities, we have then uh, additional partners for clinical re relevance analysis, project manage and management, and also for outreach and dissemination. And then uh, Robin De Bruin uh, from Philips Innovation Services uh, 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 continues, and uh, he explains then how to work with us. Thank you, Yossi. Uh, thank you for introducing the, uh, the, the project. Um, my name is Robin de Bruin. I'm Business Development Director at, uh, at Philips and here to present to you how to work with our uh, pilot line uh, project. Um, yes. So first, the single entry point, some unique factors of the Metva project is uh, that customers can come in at one central location, although in these times that's virtual, of course, uh, a front office. Uh, I'm uh, setting up with uh, the colleagues the, uh, the front office for the for the Metro pilot line, uh, working with uh, multiple professionals in the medical device domain, um, working with ISO 13485 companies like Philips itself, RTOs like VTT, uh, but also working together uh, in the ecosystem of other European funded pilot lines to serve customers best. Uh, the customers we are focusing on, you see gave already some uh, examples uh, from in vivo or in vitro focused photonics companies uh, from, from small or very small up to, uh, to large corporations. And we are showing the, uh, uh, how the pipeline works already also with a variety of these kind of companies in the demo cases. So the, uh, customer that wants to use the Metva pilot line to accelerate innovation. Uh, how does that work? There is a framework that we use uh, known in the uh, industrialization field from maturing, slowly maturing a innovation uh, according to all the uh, eventually medical device regulations that are out there. Uh, this is sometimes conflicting uh, also uh, you see commented on the uh, heterogeneity of the photonics. There's also a quite uh, problematic combination of innovation and medical device regulations. And Medfab is going to solve this uh, across the whole development chain. So in uh, working within Medfab, starting with fast learning at uh, the low maturity phase, we're able to support proof of concepts, feasibility studies, uh, especially also in this phase, technology cons consultation and road mapping can be very valuable for startups, uh, sometimes not very experienced in these kind of fields. Uh, they can pretty fast work on their business plan and, uh, and, and mature that further. Then uh, we go to a phase we call flexible control. So this is already starting uh, developing the project, the process towards uh, uh, something that's getting close to, uh, to the market. Uh, and of course, upscaling the feasibility studies. Uh, studies. Uh, then we transition into a more formal phase where there's industrial control. Uh, the ISO 13485 companies uh, will be more involved by developing the manufacturing uh, and also providing uh, technology transfer uh, under the regulations from, for example, technologies available at RTOs. 
uh, then uh, the second to last uh, phase is the pre-manufacturing. Uh, so this is already uh, quite a formal phase, uh, transitioning to volume partners, uh, could be external, could be uh, within the project. And then, of course, the five, uh, the last phase is manufacturing the product and process is completely mature. Now, you've already heard me describing different levels of maturity. So how do we assess maturities of innovations coming to MedFab uh, when they are uh, assessed by the front office? Um, there are two levels, uh, one much well known, let's say, technology readiness level, TRL levels. Uh, the other that we employ, especially for manufacturing photonic medical devices, you see it's also crucial to assess the manufacturing readiness level, so the MRL level. Um, as uh, a typical technology-focused startup would quickly raise the technology readiness level going, uh, going up in phases, but still working in laboratory environments, for example, uh, but then at the product maturity, trying to transfer manufacturing and then coming into all kinds of problems. This is called the high risk route on this graph going up and then to the right. Um, you also have a very industrial way, which is the, the, the inverse of that. So going to the right and then up the safe route is where you really first work on your manufacturing that it's industrial and then develop the product. Uh, although it being safe, it's also of course a bit slower. So in MedFab, we're, going, we're employing a system uh, based also years of uh, experience from Philips to uh, mature uh, both the technology and the manufacturing. So I described the, the, the slow uh, development of maturity, which follows the phases uh, that are depicted in the graph. So the really first fast learning phase is exploratory. Uh, it's low TRL levels and low uh, MRL levels. But then going to the flexible control uh, and towards the industrial control, we employ what we call advanced development. So you're at the same time maturing your manufacturing process as your technology of your product. And then uh, going all the way to the top right corner is the uh, execution machine that we call PDLM, product development launch. And then this is called sustaining engineering for specifically MedFab is where uh, yeah, the, all the processes, not only for medical device regulations, but also for uh, keeping your yields, keeping quality, keeping supply chain in check is, is done. But the MedFab part will mainly be involved in phases one, two, and three, uh, getting it to an industrial control uh, to an acceptable TRL level, an acceptable MRL level to be transferred. Um, that is how the front office works, and I would like to give the talking stick to, to Nanat, who will introduce the, the offerings. Thank you, Robin, very much, and hello from, to everybody from my side. My name is Nenad Marjanovic. I'm working as a project manager at uh, CSCM, which is a Swiss RTO. And uh, for you today, we will present you what we are offering. Uh, with respect to what was said earlier and how we are working for you as a one-stop shop. Uh, basically, uh, talking about uh, um, deploying a photonic solution for medical devices could uh, go in a broad range from, from the disposable plasmonic fluidic sensor, as you see it on the left-hand side, or a complex uh, solution which includes, let's say, uh, in this case, lateral flow assay reader, which contain uh, and consist of the um, basically a cartridge and the reading unit, and of course the display, uh, which could be, for instance, smartphone or any kind of uh, computer devices. So uh, this could be we are talking about disposable or or standalone or a components or a part of the system or the whole system which we can provide for you, whether in a level of a prototype, demos, or ready system to be used. And for that purposes, uh, we build, uh, as uh, mentioned at the beginning, a rock-solid consortium, which can offer you a variety of the uh, solutions, starting from basically a 
feasibility study with respect to the design, to the simulation, fabrication, and testing. So um, I don't know whether for me it's okay. So uh, to offer to a little bit give you an overview of which kind of photonics technologies we are talking about, we put them in these four blocks. Uh, basically, which you can uh, easily see on your screen, starting from the components. Uh, then those components could be uh, packed in the platforms. And of course, if you have a, a components and platform, we are talking about uh, technology which are helping to integrate all these uh, uh, components in one uh, solid block. And sometimes you also need a post-processing uh, technologies. So all these uh, segments and all these technologies are sitting at the various partner within the consortium. But for you, this should not be a big worry because we are here for you as a one uh, virtual entity where all these components basically are having its own uh, uh, flow um, and very ordered structure. You will see that the end is example of the production kit in which uh, components from the design toward the fabrication testing has a certain kind of uh, order. And basically, at the end of the day, we offer, uh, or, uh, offer you the ready products. So those uh, technologies are in a different um, maturity or technology readiness level. So that's why we have uh, their uh, RTOs and uh, established uh, companies which can basically cover the prototypes and the ready product, as I said. Uh, but sometimes it is uh, very important that to understand that not all and every components fit into your ideas or to your need. <coughs> That's why through the uh, high level um, R&D program of whether research organizations or the, uh, the partners uh, established company in our consortium, we offer you a different development support, which could basically start with the simulations and analysis, whether these are optical or electrical solutions, then the system design, and finally, characterization. So as you may see, so these photonic uh, technologies and uh, supporting de de support, de development support from the RTOs and established R&D sectors of the companies can offer you a full value chain uh, from the feasibility study toward the, let's say, prototyping and ready products. Of course, this is a heavy slide, including a various of technologies which you cannot be seen now and in the all details which I'm presenting now, but there will be uh, after me and Mariana who will tell you where is the uh, the site or where is the internet uh, platform where you can list those technology and eventually pick up some of what you need. Uh, for the time being, I would like just to go through several of these uh, blocks. For instance, these photonic components, we are talking about, uh, for instance, integrated circuits. So I will just uh, zip through the couple of examples which can give you the variety of uh, TRL and MRL uh, levels. So for instance, this uh, silicon-based integrated pla uh, photonic platform from IMEC is basically eight inch uh, wafer uh, platform, which include various of these uh, passive and active components, which could be used in different kind of uh, uh, optical solution for telecom or datacom. Uh, this kind of uh, wafer is uh, typically done in a multi-project uh, multi run uh, and a certain kind of customiz customization is possible uh, and it's uh, negotiable. So the other, um, the other um, example is that we give you uh, this micro optics where you can see uh, um, uh, micro lenses, for instance, which could be developed as a standalone or which can be transferred or, a, or on a bare uh, dies or on a kind of your uh, photonic chips and can be integrated and can be sealed. And uh, with a, a distance between the lenses in a order of a few micrometer, micrometers. So uh, further on, 
fiber fiber optics could be integrated over the large and variety large area devices and a variety of sub technologies can help integrating these fibers in a connectors or vias toward the wanted high end quality products for instance uh, again so we show you here a bit of uh, MRL and TRL uh, uh, just that you have a feeling where we are standing as a consortium with the development optical components in this case for instance different kind of gratings or um, uh, optical uh, gratings and uh, optical coupling and coupling uh, features which could be uh, placed on a uh, high throughput technology through high throughput technology embossing or nano imprinting on a different kind of substance for instance even in a roll to roll lead to cost effective solutions and um, for instance further on we can speak about active components which are in this case uh, inject printed platinum electrodes for uh, cortical uh, stimulation and recording these are the photonic components which you can uh, take of course uh, as i said this is just uh, maybe um, a, a, a one friction of the whole bunch of technology which is sitting in that block and which you can further explore by yourself uh, or at the right uh, community platform which will be led uh, later on in the in the this uh, non photonic uh, non photonic peripheral uh, technology which we offer could be a printed electronics where you can uh, on a cost effective and high throughput way um, basically print the uh, electrical connectors or electrodes uh, with the various technology then we can think about also um, about 3d printing in this case you see an example of stainless steel uh, uh, part which is uh, printed with the various of these feeds which basically end up with the channels and you can put different kind of filters or syringe uh, to mix the, the solution and then draw it over the, uh, the photonic biochip for analysis for instance then we can give you an example of uh, microfluidics on a variety of uh, polymer or liquid uh, silicon rubber material which could be done by the uh, uh, which could be perforated by or performed by injection molding or embossing processes and of course uh, on the large scale uh, replication could be done uh, in a in a very easy way um, this can go further with the um, okay, integration. This is also very important when components are ready. So basically, uh, optical assembly, uh, where we can here give you an example of uh, a line of optical components to the level of sub micrometer, which could be imagined like a. Uh, fibers, lenses, beam splitters, and uh, all this lead to a miniaturization of the devices, which you can see, for instance, uh, here. Then we can think about integration of the components, whether they're electronic, electrical or optical, or light uh, elements uh, with a pick and place technologies, which could be uh, soldered or uh, con uh, assembled with the various of technologies, uh, which could be um, basically bonding or which could be using the the conductive epoxy and further on and uh, basically we speak about surface activation possibilities when we can change the surface energy of the solute of the substrates in which we can mobilize or immobilize assays or fix the molecules and uh, passivate the, the, the surfaces make a biocompatible and think so uh, further on so further on we speak about post-processing in which basically we we speak about let's say uh, an over molding when you protect your uh, electronic devices which are weather printed or in a classical silicon way done um, in a in a kind of a hermetic ceiling or proper ceiling to avoid any kind of moisture or water then we speak about hermetic sealing, sometimes very uh, important if we are speaking about implants or, or electronics going into the uh, vital uh, organs in, uh, in uh, vitro or in vivo, uh, in vitro or in vivo. And uh, basically we, are, uh, we, where we can solder or we can seal the one or many blocks. Uh, and of course, thin film deposition where we can print on a 
high throughput and uh, cost effective technologies like uh, inject printing, gravel printing, flexo, and, and, and so on. As said, uh, beside these uh, established or uh, technology, uh, technologies, the process development support is uh, um, offering you uh, various of simulation tools. For instance, here you see uh, ray tracing where we can simulate basically and optimize the optical co component performances uh, with the illumination properties and detectors and all kinds of stuff, then rigorous. Uh, modeling of fluidics, uh, or here uh, it's a, it, it could be a thermal effect uh, modeling, whether the performances of the future components are, are good or bad. And finally, we can, uh, not last not, but not least, not finally, so we, we can do the modeling of the light propagation in the tissues. So various of, of, of optical and simulation tools to give you the, the good feeling whether the device are, are going, uh, development is going into the a good direction and finally this is an illustration of one production kit which we uh, put together uh, uh, several components you, you can see the value chain could go from the design which is done in this case in vtt for you this is in finland and then uh, all the proper features are designed uh, and photonic structures are designed and given to a production line which is sitting in your now which is in austria for uh, high throughput, for instance, roll-to-roll -roll UV nano-imprinting uh, nano lithography, those features like a grating or uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, microfluidics are uh, placed on one foil. In the meanwhile, uh, another foils where we have this feed-through and lamination tapes are produced on the other machine at VTT, and finally they are integrated together in this hybrid integration, and finally you have a very uh, nice and uh, disposable uh, plasmonic fluidic sensor. So this is just an example how the workflow could be imagined that from the design simulation and proper pick, uh, picking of the uh, components, the system can be assembled as, as either as a disposable uh, or as a, as a core um, system, including the reader and uh, the um, software, yeah. So that, that's from my side. So further on, I will uh, give the floor to Mariana, who will tell you where the details and more of those technology can be seen. Thank you, Nanat. Exactly how uh, he mentioned. Uh, so the, all these technologies uh, that are described in the MedFab uh, portfolio. Uh, can be found uh, publicly in, in one uh, platform that is called the Community Management Platform. Um, my name is Mariana Pacheco Blanco. I work at the MIRES, the Business Innovation and Management Institute, uh, here in the Czech Republic, and I work as a program manager. Uh, so, the, what is this community platform? Management platform is one virtual sh stop shop. Uh, it is uh, also following uh, the, the rationale of MedFab as a private line. Uh, this uh, platform is also a community building tool, uh, making a low barrier uh, for the technology adoption and, and, the, and the development of new uh, medical devices using the photonic technologies. It is also a benchmarking tool uh, for the available uh, technologies in the whole ecosystem. At this moment, uh, we have a, a certain uh, publication guidelines and in the sense that uh, people can register uh, individually or as a company. Uh, they can register their technology services or products or prototypes uh, where the community manager will approve uh, at, at, at uh, this uh, MedFab uh, partner. And uh, this will be published in the, in the community platform uh, following uh, the GDPR uh, uh, and, and uh, guidelines and, and to comply with these uh, uh, private uh, uh, rights. Um, then it can be visualized in the organization registry. And uh, also if they, like the, public, uh, like the organization can be can be seen also uh, like, like these items in the marketplace uh, meaning these prototypes or technologies or services can also be visualized and also all all this has to be approved by the community manager uh, manager uh, then um, 
there will be a, there is a section that is uh, for restricted for MedFab uh, partners that uh, of course it will be just uh, used internally just uh, in, in case when the, there is some confidentiality that doesn't uh, need to be done uh, outside but this is this will also be applied for for the external uh, companies that are not MedFab partners but would like to uh, belong to this community or to this ecosystem uh, also, we have another module uh, where uh, people can see uh, the activities or events, and these normally are also uh, added uh, in and can be publicly av available. I will uh, make uh, some live uh, explanation uh, how, how to how this works and and how it, how it looks like and where to find everything. So uh, in MedFab website, you can go directly to the offering and then uh, click on the community marketplace. Then this uh, will open you uh, this platform. As I mentioned, we have three modules, uh, the organization registry, a community marketplace and the community. Uh, in the organization registry, you can see the, uh, like the catalog of all the companies or organizations that uh, belong to, to to this uh, platform or to this ecosystem. At this moment, only uh, Metfa partners are uh, embedded in this platform. But from now on, uh, external uh, par uh, external companies or organizations can register. And that, that doesn't mean that uh, they will be part of the uh, Metfa uh, project, but they will belong to the Metfa uh, community or ecosystem. Uh, in the community marketplace, uh, you can find all the technologies that Nenad had explained very nicely uh, uh, regarding these uh, specific um, uh, building blocks. And you can see them, uh, they can, you can see them uh, all here and you can filter them according to your needs. Also, you can find them according to what, uh, some keywords and uh, you will get uh, some information about the organization, uh, description, uh, some images, and if you are interested, you can be contacting this directly, the organization directly. In the community, as I, it was also mentioned, uh, you can see the uh, how the community is, uh, what are the community activities, what are the events, some funding, uh, etc. So this can be also seen. Uh, at this moment, we have several of the of the of activities like for example the NNT conference etc so i i think i will stop sharing my screen now so please don't hesitate to go and, and look at it and and if you are interested to register uh, as an external company some of your uh, and be part of this community uh, please register and uh, and we will be uh, as, as I said, this will be going to these publication guidelines. Or you can always contact uh, uh, at, at info uh, that, uh, at uh, medfat.eu. Okay, then I will stop. And I think uh, from uh, the community platform, that's it. And I will give uh, the word to, uh, to Kamal. Ka Kamal? Uh, from Israel. Uh, Israel, yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't see him. Uh, so to Royal Bets from IMEC and Ilgent will uh, give us uh, the the next presentation. So the floor is your, yours, Royal. Thank you, Mariana. So indeed, I'm uh, Rul Bats from IMEC and Ghent University. So together with uh, Kamal Kaur, uh, I'm uh, coordinating the. The, the work package and the activities around the so-called demo case projects in uh, in MedFab. So let me uh, introduce. Um, well, first of all, over the past 20 years, obviously there are already many uh, successful examples of medical devices based on uh, photonics, things of uh, pulse oximeters or uh, fever thermometers or uh, or uh, diagnostic devices, biosensors, smartwatches, OCT, catheterized uh, approaches. So there is a lot of um, successful devices based on photonics, but um, there are also many other health challenges uh, ahead that are not fully addressed uh, yet and where I think uh, photonics can help. Um, think of the, the challenges brought by an aging society. Um, think of the challenges 
brought by affordability of uh, medical solutions. Think of uh, the recent problem of pandemics. Well, in association with all that, um, there is really a lot of opportunity brought by photonics enabled devices mm -hmm. um, in a variety of medical contexts. Think of uh, low cost personal devices, bedside devices, point of care devices. Uh, think also of minimally invasive devices, uh, catheter approaches, implants, electronic pills, and think of uh, rapid diagnostics. Well, it's in this broader uh, context that MedFab uh, believes it can offer a solution. On one hand, there are many needs. On the other hand, MedFab brings together uh, the best of Europe's um, advanced photonics technologies, uh, along with experience in ISO 13485 manufacturing. And, and what really the, the, the MedFab demo case call is all about is the bridge between those, those two. Um, so in a, in a nutshell, um, uh, the, the MedFab demo case initiative um, supports companies in medical device innovation, uh, provides best in class uh, advanced photonic technology. And in the case of those demo cases, a major part of the budget required for this innovation project is actually covered by MedFab's public funding for demo cases, the so-called uh, demo case fund. So what does that mean in practice? Well, it, it, it means that in the case a third party company is an SME, a small or medium sized company, uh, then um, as much as 75% of the budget needed for the uh, demo case uh, innovation project costs made by any of the MedFab consortium partners, at least, uh, well, up to 75% of that budget is covered by this uh, demo case fund, meaning public funding. Um, whereas, uh, on the other hand, there is an expectation of a 25% contribution by the, by the customer being the third party company. Um, for large companies, these, um, these, this distribution is different. It's 50-50, uh, essentially. The demo case fund is worth 1.85 million euro um, and the, for each project, innovation project that we will support, uh, the maximum EU contribution, public funding contribution will be up to 125 kilo euro. Okay, so, um, so how does the process work? Um, well, we have tried to make it as uh, streamlined and easy as possible. It all starts with a um, pre-screening intake form that can be done at any time. Um, after that, uh, there is a preparation of a, of a full proposal together with one of the consortium uh, parties of uh, MedFab. Um, uh, on the basis of that full proposal, there is an evaluation and selection process. Um, and, and after that, of course, uh, if green light is given, there is project uh, execution. We'll go in a little more detail on this. Um, it starts with uh, anybody can go to the MedFab website, check out the technology offering in MedFab, check out the guidelines for the demo case call, and uh, well, then as a first step, complete this intake form and submit it. So far, this is all done um, without an uh, NDA. The intake form is very generic and very simple. Um, then, on the basis of uh, a crude description of the of the of the request, so to say, um, and, uh, one of the partners uh, of MedFab is um, assigned the job to help with the process of um, making a full proposal. So there will be a, a, a coach from the MedFab side. Uh, and together with the customer, a full proposal will be written. Think of a document of uh, uh, 10 to 20 pages at most. Uh, this is, of course, happening under NDA with that coaching partner. And when that is ready, that can be submitted. And at least every two months, there will be a process of uh, uh, evaluation of these uh, proposals and uh, selection. And as soon as that has happened, um, a, a, a joint implementation agreement uh, is, uh, is, is drawn up between the third party and the NetFed partner or partners um, involved in the demo case innovation project. 
So that is essentially the, 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 the process. Um, so what is the selection mechanism? Well, at the pre-screening stage, uh, it's very simple. We simply check whether uh, the, the request for an innovation project matches what MedFab can offer. Obviously, it has to do with it must have to do with a, a medical device and it must have to do with um, an, an, uh, an innovative technology that MedFab is capable of, uh, of providing. Um, at the full proposal stage, uh, it's obviously a bit more elabor elaborate. Um, uh, the, the, the concept being presented must be medically relevant and innovative. Um, implementation plan has to be sound and feasible, of course. And we will also check for societal and or uh, economic impact. So that's essentially uh, the checks that are being done. So there is, an, uh, there is a help desk for this demo case call. Uh, you see details here, telephone number, email address. Um, there is, of course, the MedFab website where the whole mechanism is being explained in full detail. Um, we are already in the stage now of uh, launching the first uh, round of such demo case uh, projects. Uh, back in June, we received uh, 10 applications from nine different countries. But of course, uh, the, the, the process is open for the next round uh, and we are welcoming uh, taking uh, take forms um, uh, uh, Starting January 2022, we, we, we start with the second round. Okay, I think uh, that explains the process, and uh, I can give the floor back to Yussi, I guess. I think the floor goes back to me. So thank you very okay. much all for your presentations. And uh, as you can see here now, there is uh, a lot of additional information where you can find more about uh, MedFab or how you can contact MedFab. Uh, I also would like to remind all the attendees that you still can submit your questions or comments in the question um, box. But uh, uh, there are a few questions uh, which we could already uh, answer, I believe. So um, I think perhaps maybe to you, Rul, uh, to the last presentation, uh, uh, you already mentioned that there were some applications, so maybe from that or from a uh, general overview and from general uh, MedPub point of view, uh, are there any, uh, let's say, dominant applications of photonic technologies within uh, medical diagnostics devices? And uh, is there any particular scope of applications that MedPub is focusing on? Well, there is no specific focus. I, I, uh, I believe MedFab is focusing on any diagnostic medical device um, and perhaps even a, a little bit beyond uh, diagnostic devices. Uh, but the essence is all about um, medical devices, medical diagnostic devices that can be made more performant or can be made lower cost on the basis of uh, innovative photonics technologies. So that's the key essence of uh, MedFab, and that's the key essence also of the of the demo case calls. And but we are not specific to any particular uh, medical application, of course. Uh, thank you. Uh, another question, I guess, it would be going to Mariana, as it's about uh, a community management platform. Uh, so uh, you, you showed it to us. You did demonstrate it to us. So um, as Understanding is that uh, pretty much anyone can be submitting their technologies uh, into the community management platform, but how would it be uh, differentiated from uh, those technologies which are already um, within MedFab? So what would be the difference between the submitted by anyone uh, or any other companies uh, with respect to those which are um, uh, submitted by the MedFab partners? Could you comment yeah, on that? Uh, thank you. Of course. Thank you, Elena, uh, for the question. Uh, I think uh, it is important to mention that Medfab also wants to to make uh, an ecosystem uh, of of the Medfab, of the medical technologies using photonics. Uh, but in the in the uh, but in a practical way, uh, it can be um, uh, visible uh, that it's a Medfab partner or not. 
so people can uh, realize uh, if that technology, if that service is offered by a Medfa partner or not. Uh, but at the end, uh, what uh, I mentioned, the importance is that also to build uh, this ecosystem uh, with uh, Medfa partners and non Medfa partners, uh, that everything uh, comes together in one single platform. So practically, the uh, compet competences and technologies that are offered by non Medfa partners could be also used to implement into projects which can be run beyond the Medfa project. Yes, uh, that is also the idea that this uh, platform will be uh, sustainable and as the same as as the same as the pilot line, right? So uh, yeah, to be to bring together and that they they can off, offer um, not only Medfa partners but others that can can complement the, the the things that Medfa cannot uh, cover by itself. Okay. And uh, coming back to uh, working together with uh, MedFab and uh, potential MedFab customers. So what would be the mechanism actually to address potential conflict of interest or when uh, a customer coming in and uh, one way or another would not like to be interacting with a particular partner of the, uh, of the pilot line because of some co conflict of uh, interest or competition. So I don't know, maybe Yusi could comment on that. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Elena. So this is a, a recognized as an, uh, a potential topic that uh, we need to consider very carefully. So we have mechanism that uh, no uh, information is diluted to uh, 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 parties that our customer uh, doesn't want. So customer always knows that what met up parties have access uh, to information. So this is uh, how, how we handle these cases. Okay, thanks a lot. And also with regards to uh, operations uh, of uh, MedFab and uh, in Robin presentation, we heard about uh, TRL and MRL level. So what's TRL or MRL or combination of the two uh, of the project can be actually addressed to MedFab to, uh, for the further executions uh, are there any limits uh, at which hero let's say um, it has to be before metpa put on board the project okay so if i, I then co continue uh, so uh, basically we have uh, all the knowledge to start from very early uh, phase uh, development low trl but uh, uh, primarily we are the plan is not to do kind of a very a, a basic research proof of principle. But once proof of principle uh, exists, then we can support already to make a, a proof of concepts and uh, uh, first demonstrators and then all the way up to production. OK. And uh, one more question, as uh, we addressed already a little bit uh, on the applications and scope of applications. Is there any technology which seems to be uh, becoming a little more predominant uh, within the photonics technologies in the uh, medical devices? So uh, we've seen that MedFab has uh, a lot of different phot photonics and non-photonics technologies, but since we are focusing here on photonics-based devices, so is there any technology which seems to be a little bit more in lead or enabling something which is definitely not possible with other technologies. And I don't know uh, if you see you would like to continue or maybe Nenad or Ru would like to comment on this. Okay, if I then uh, con continue. So I would say that then, uh, so we opened the uh, services uh, to uh, uh, external companies uh, this year and actually, uh, uh, at least for now, it's uh, difficult to say that if uh, there's a certain dominance, because there was actually quite a, a, quite a bit variety between the uh, uh, application field, whether it was uh, in vitro or in vivo diagnostic, and uh, what technologies are needed. So I would say that uh, there is not, I, uh, it's maybe too early say, to say that if there's a certain specific uh, dominance with, uh, with some specific uh, 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 photonic uh, technology. Okay, 
Thank you. Uh, I guess another true, question. If I may, oh, if I may uh, come in here, uh, I guess it's true that there is quite a diversity, but as a common denominator, I think uh, we see that there is a quite a large need for technologies that allow to miniaturize medical devices and or make them lower cost. So where the scaling to, to some higher volume also implies that uh, the cost can become substantially lower than what it has been in the past with more conventional technology. So, so I think for me, these are the two um, trends that I think I can recognize, miniaturization and or lower cost. That's, uh, that's what's uh, very important, and that's what is enabled by quite a few of the technologies that are uh, being offered by Medfab. Okay, um, so uh, there is a request for a little clarification of some aspects. Um, is the contribution valid only for costs related to activities made by the Medfab or also for other costs? And uh, do the customers have to pay and then get the money back or can it be just paid for the part of the costs of the customer and i believe that I uh, with I regards can... to the open call well i think i can take this one um, so yes the costs that are partly covered by the demo case fund are those costs that are incurred by a medfab partner or, or, or several partners whatever um, so it's not the costs incurred by the third party itself. So when we talk about 75% coverage, then it's 75% coverage of the costs made by any of the MedFab partner. Uh, that contribution is covered directly within the MedFab consortium. So the 75% the is not to be covered first by the third party or something. That's an internal um, um, financial transaction me mechanism, but obviously for the 25% in cash contribution by the third party, that is done by regular regular invoicing. So is that a, is that a clear answer to the question? Uh, I hope so. Um... But uh, one more clarification perhaps we could make here, because uh, we did talk that uh, MedFab is uh, Europeans, uh, pilot, uh, Europe's pilot line, but with regards to the customers, uh, who can become customers of MedFab uh, and uh, who can be applying for the open calls with regards to geography? Well, in essence, any European company uh, can, can apply for the demo case project. Don't ask me very precisely what the precise definition is of European company. Uh, and if if there are cases of doubt, then we'll have to figure it out. But crudely speaking, any European company, any company uh, that is registered in a European country, and I probably should say a European Union uh, country. Okay, extended, thank you very much for this clarification. Extended with a couple of countries which have uh, agreements with EU, like uh, I believe Israel, Norway, uh, and a few others, I guess, will also be applicable, I guess. I'm not, I'm not so sure about Switzerland at this time, um, although I think that is also okay because MedFab is still Horizon 2020, not, not yet Horizon Europe. Uh, I'm less sure about the uh, UK, to be honest. Okay. Oh, well, I'm sure some of these details can be also uh, found within the MedFab uh, website and the open call section of that. Uh, there is a lot of detailed information over there. Um, okay. Um, Yusi, would you like to make any final remarks to our today's webinar before we closing? Okay. Uh, uh, thank, thanks, uh, Rena, uh, and uh, thanks uh, all the viewers for your uh, interest in, in MedFab. I hope that um, this webinar clarified uh, what we offer, how to work with us, and then uh, how to be, uh, uh, become a customer. And please uh, know that uh, we have these uh, open calls, but uh, uh, all the companies also outside Europe are most welcome to uh, contact us. Uh, outside the open calls. So thank you. 
Thank you, Yusi. And uh, just once again, I would like to remind you that uh, you can find a lot of information about MedFab on MedFab website. You can contact us through info at medfab.eu and follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. And uh, here I would like to say also big thanks to all the presenters um, of uh, today's webinar and uh, for sure also to all the attendees uh, of the webinar for your questions and for being here today with us. And uh, I also would like to let you know that shortly you will receive an email with the information how you can access this uh, webinar again on demand. And um, we are looking forward to get in touch with you. But for now, I would like to say thank you and have a great day. Bye bye.